another Journalist Toolbox training. My name is Mike Riley, the founder and editor of Journalist Toolbox. You can find our website at journalisttoolbox.org or by visiting the spj.org website. It's linked right there off the homepage. Uh, we're going to talk about public records today. Um, this is uh, leading into Sunshine Week, so happy Sunshine Week. Uh, we're going to talk about finding public records and data sets. Uh, and don't worry, uh, you don't have to jot down all of these uh, links here. Uh, they are linked right out of the description of this video. So we're going to look at uh, data portals, U.S. And, and international data portals. We're going to look at some Freedom of Information Act tools, some FOIA tools, uh, including Muckrock's excellent uh, resources. The state FOIA guides are very helpful. Uh, we're also going to look at GuideStar and, and uh, uh, the ProPublica nonprofit data explorer to look up Form 990s. Uh, and then we'll round it out with a little playtime with uh, uh, Google Dataset Search, which is a good kind of broad search tool for, for public records and other data sets out on the web. Um, again, you can find uh, all of these resources at journalisttoolbox.org, uh, where we have more than 20,000 resources, everything from COVID vaccines to uh, you know, data journalism tools, social media tools. And we have a public records page. It's pretty deep uh, right here on the front page. Um, uh, I'll go to the public records page here in just a minute, but we also have Form 990s, uh, FOIA and finding data, crime databases, and working with whistleblowers. So you have a lot of subtopics here. Uh, under kind of this broad uh, public records database. Uh, the FOIA page is very helpful. It's got the most recent updates up here, uh, and then a lot of tools for just finding various data portals, uh, some tip sheets and some uh, training videos, all kinds of really helpful stuff here. Um, so you can find uh, uh, FOIA uh, and data portal information here. Uh, the public records page uh, is up here. Uh, this, these are larger databases, you know, uh, the National Security Archive, uh, the Black Vault, uh, uh, FBI's uh, crime database, um, all kinds of different uh, databases in here. Crime, all kinds of different stuff, uh, campaign finance. Uh, and you can just scroll through here and find all kinds of uh, resources that are helpful to you. So uh, take advantage of our public records page. So uh, it's always teased right here off the front. Uh, just look for the uh, public records folders here as your little icon. Um, we're going to jump in now to some of the tools. Uh, the first one is dataportals.org. It uh, has nearly 600 international data portals listed here, including some that are stateside. You can see Ann Arbor, Michigan here. Uh, but you can click on these uh, just on the little link here. There's also a map version of this if you want to look at it on a globe. Um, but, you know, I clicked on a African Open Data here. It explains a little bit about the data set here uh, or the data portal here. And then you can click on it and actually go into uh, the site and start searching for uh, data uh, sets in Africa. Um, so this is kind of a nice jumping off point if you've tried Googling and haven't been able to find a you know, data portal for a foreign country or maybe some small town somewhere. Uh, this is a good uh, uh, jumping off point, dataportals.org. Uh, the other one uh, that I find very helpful is this GitHub page from the Sunlight uh, Foundation. Uh, it lists, unfortunately these aren't clickable, uh, but it lists data portals by state and other municipalities, counties, cities as well uh, around the U.S. Um, uh, and it just has the link here. You know, this is the Cook County, uh, Illinois one right here. I can go in and just copy this link and, and paste it into my browser and find that data portal. Um, so, you know, good, you know, kind of one-stop shopping if you're looking for uh, state portals and things like that that you can't just find by Googling them very quickly. Um, uh, Student Press Law Center, SPLC, does some tremendous work. Uh, and uh, for the past 20 some years, they've had uh, a letter generator tool that uh, you can click on right here um, that you can go in and use uh, to write a uh, form letter uh, to request public documents, a, a FOIA form letter. Uh, now, there's a lot of these different types of tools that are out on the market. ifoia.org from Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press. That's one that I use quite a bit. Um, this is a request letter that I'm doing on EPA salaries. Uh, I can open it up here. Uh, what's nice about this is uh, you're basically filling out a little form uh, and then uh, you're going in uh, and just plug in, you know, in this case, your name. It, it actually gives you a little form here in this little field box. Uh, you type in your social security number, your date of birth, all this information. Note, note the SOCH is, is blotted out for your safety. Uh, you put in your signature, uh, you have a, a signature notarized on here. Uh, if you have an e-signature, you can drop that in and, and uh, have a notary sign off on it. Uh, and then you can send this off. Uh, you can click Next, uh, and then it'll uh, take you through the whole process where you can finish it. It'll send it off to the proper agency. 
um, and uh, you know, then it'll notify you when you hear back from that agency. Um, you also can do it as a written letter and then upload it here uh, and send it off as well. So that's ifoia.org. Uh, Student Press Law Center has a very similar one here uh, on their public records ge letter generator. It's a, a great little tool. kind of walks you through the steps to do it. Uh, it doesn't take too long. Muckrock, tremendous website. Um, they have this FOIA 101 tips and tricks uh, page in here. Um, what is considered a public record and what isn't. Um, kind of a little flow chart for beginners to understand, you know, how the process works. Um, all these little tip sheets in here, they just do a really nice job of, of laying out, uh, uh, you know, FOIA 101. Uh, I have the students in my uh, data journalism and investigative reporting class uh, go through and read a lot of these guides on a weekly basis. Um, Muckrock also has uh, the state uh, uh, government uh, uh, open records guides. Um, so you can go through and look here, and, and they start with this nice little grid here, this little graphic. Shows the average number of days, you know, in this case, the USA, uh, and then by state as well, the average number of days it takes to get a response uh, on public records. Uh, as you see, some of these, you know, Alaska is 100 days, US is 280 for requesting from the federal government. It takes a long time, and it varies by state. You know, Louisiana is very slow, you know, Alabama is pretty slow. Uh, Illinois is not bad. They're in, you know, kind of a lower uh, group. Virginia is quite good with 36. Rhode Island, way to go, 20. Uh, days, uh, but I can click on any of these icons and it will take me to that state's uh, page. Uh, and it breaks down their open records laws for that state, um, which is really helpful to understand, you know, because it varies. There are certain states that have very open public records laws. Uh, there are others that uh, have very poor um, uh, public records laws. Um, it also goes into how you can submit. Uh, you Can you send it by mail? Can you request them in person? Um, uh, how much detail do you need to have in the letter? Um, you know, uh, who's in charge of enforcing it, you know, which uh, legal entity in the uh, state government is, is uh, in charge of making sure this is enforced. Uh, so, you know, all kinds of just really helpful how to appeal uh, uh, your uh, request if it's rejected. Uh, but again, all this varies by states. You can just click around these little state icons uh, and look them up uh, and, and see the different uh, 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 legal requirements in each state. And again, it varies greatly. Um, so you can see uh, here, here's Wisconsin's and breaks down uh, the law again and, and, you know, some of the details on how you file one. Um, again, these little guides are very handy, especially if you're doing some out-of-state requests. Maybe you're not familiar uh, with how that state's public records work. Um, next thing I want to talk about is GuideStar.org. Uh, this is a website that uh, you can have a free login with it uh, and search for uh, uh, Form 990s. These are forms that uh, nonprofit organizations, churches, charities need to fill out uh, to be remain tax exempt. Uh, and they still have to file. It's much like a tax return, except they're not paying taxes. Uh, and you can go in here and search for, uh, you know, any uh, charity you wish. I'm going to do Chicago Cubs charities. Go Cubs. I live right by Wrigley Field. Um, you can go in here and, and you can also search by zip code or by metro area if there's no, new, you know, several different names for the charity. Um, you know, if you're doing like the United Way and you only want United Way Chicago or Special Olympics, you know, which both these are, you know, national and international charities, you can search it by city as well. Uh, and right here, Chicago Cub Charities pops up, has a little uh, description with it, gives you a little synopsis, their gross receipts. Uh, and then you also can access... Uh, uh, more information by downloading a little PDF uh, of their uh, more detailed data. And the tax forms usually are right up here at the very top. It's got their mission and some of their, uh, you know, overall information, their EIN number, uh, their main address, contact info. Uh, but the forms are over here. Uh, and you can look at them typically for the last three years. Um, some of them go a little deeper, but uh, the, most of them I've seen go back three uh, years. And then you can open up the PDF and then download it up here. Um, you know, really nice, you know, you can go in and kind of see their overall financial picture. Uh, you can also see where the money's going, what charities are receiving money from this. Uh, you can also see it on this page right here, it shows their board of directors, board of directors. Uh, uh, the Ricketts family is basically the, the board of directors. They own the ball club. Um, uh, big supporters of, of, of Trump. Uh, you know, Pete Ricketts here is the governor of Nebraska. Uh, you know, they estimate the number of hours they put into it, and it's all voluntary. They, they aren't receiving any compensation according to this document. Uh, however, some, you know, boards of directors, they do pay their boards uh, from some of these charities, sometimes outrageous sums. Uh, this one's all voluntary. It's basically all the, the Cubs executives and 
the governor of Nebraska. Uh, you can also scroll down and you know look through and see who's receiving money from them. It's kind of interesting to, to look through and, and see what charities are and which ones aren't receiving uh, money. And you know that's uh, way down here at the bottom. You have to scroll quite a bit through these uh, pages. A lot, a lot of blank pages in these as well, where there's just information that's just not relevant. Um, but you can look at their you know incomes and income and receipts uh, each year. Uh, you can also look back at the last few years. Uh, you know, Cubs charities really started to take off in 2016 when the Cubs started winning 2015 and 2016. Uh, before that, they weren't doing quite as well. Here's some of the uh, you know different uh, uh, organizations that are receiving money. You, you can see uh, you know different uh, uh, baseball organizations, Chicago Bears, Anthony Rizzo, the Cubs first baseman, receives some money as charity does. Uh, it shows you how much and what it goes to Chicago public schools, things like that. So. Um, you can really track the where the money's coming from and where it's going, uh, which is a really nice little tool. Um, uh, the nice little feature of that tool. Uh, ProPublica's Nonprofit Explorer, if you're having trouble uh, with finding anything in GuideStar, um, again, the, they have a free version of it, which I, I find m meets my needs. Uh, the paid version can get quite expensive. Uh, ProPublica's Nonprofit Explorer is all free. Um, so, you know, I can go in here and, uh, you know, look up uh, Chicago Bulls charities. Um, and uh, it allows me to narrow down, you know, by, you know, is it education related, you know, any state, you know, uh, you can really narrow this down. I'm going to narrow mine down to Illinois. Um, and it also lists, you know, more recent filings on the homepage. And here we have Bulls Charities um, and overview. And you can download again uh, the last few years. This one goes back a little deeper, back to, you know, 2014, 2013, last few years. Uh, it gives you a nice little synopsis, a little uh, overview total total revenues. Um, you can see they had kind of dipped a little bit there. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, they would have hit the peak down here in, in 2015, 2016. Um, and before that, you know, not, not doing quite as well. Um, so, uh, again, uh, another way to find Form 990s, ProPublic has built this wonderful uh, database for you. Um, so, um, another thing I wanted to point out is your city's data portal. Uh, your city, county, and state, as well as data.gov, which has federal, uh, is a federal data portal. Uh, the city of Chicago data portal is just really rich in, in data and in finding stories. You can find geographic boundaries, you know, shapes of all the neighborhoods in the city and uh, all the uh, uh, transportation lines, the bus routes, the train routes through the city. Um, but you can also go in and look at, you know, building inspections. Uh, the Health and Human Services area has uh, food inspection reports on restaurants, which is very relevant. Uh, report cards on Chicago Public Schools. Uh, you can find that in the uh, education section. Um, you go down here to transportation and find everything from all the towed vehicles, traffic crashes throughout the city, um, uh, all kinds of really stuff. All the Divi bike stations, these are the public bikes that you can rent. Um, you can see what areas of the city they're in, which ones they aren't. We have a very controversial red light camera program. Uh, some really you know, interesting data sets that you can go in here and, and pull out of here. They typically uh, offer them to you uh, as a uh, CSV file, Common Separated Values or Excel file. Um, and, and here they do a really fancy job of showing you some uh, a map of them as well. Uh, their maps are pretty crude. You can export the data right here. These are all the locations of the red light cameras around the city. It could be helpful to you, helpful to your readers. Um, and CSV files right here for uh, or CSV for Excel, uh, whichever one you want. There's other formats as well, XML. Um, you can also do it as a JSON file. You can do them as shape files as well. Um, so I just wanted to point out, you know, your city, uh, county, and state have data portals typically. Uh, you can go in and find a lot of local data sets there as well. And these are all public record. Um, you don't need to ask for permission to use these. Now, keep in mind, you might need FOIA uh, law to uh, go in and obtain uh, public documents that aren't on the city data portal. Not everything makes it up there all the time. Uh, ours is pretty good here in Chicago, but there's some stuff that doesn't always make it up there. Something to keep in mind. Uh, data set search. Google data set search. This is one of my favorite tools. Uh, allows you to search the web just for data sets. Uh, and also gives you these little... Uh, 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 synopsis of the uh, data set too, so you can decide uh, whether or not you want to download that data set or not. Google does not fact check the data sets, but it does provide this little synopsis here. So whoever, whoever posts these data sets has to fill out this little form and say who created it, what time period it covers, uh, a little bit of their methodology for, for building the data set, and then you can click up here and download it. 
At the very top, it's got some pull down menus. You know, if you want a data set that's been updated in the last month or past year, or only free data sets, uh, you know, you can go through and click on these little tabs here. Stanford it has a very good mass shootings database, and uh, they have a very detailed description of what they do with them. So, uh, what, how they built this and, and what they do with the data set. Um, so as you look through here, you know, there's a lot of different uh, mass shootings databases. Uh, to download them, you just hit the blue button at the top. It'll take you to the actual web page where the uh, data set is, and you can download it from there. So I've thrown a lot at you. Um, just go through that description in uh, this video, the little description at the bottom. And I have links to all of these data sets or all of these uh, tools uh, to help you find uh, data sets, public records, all kinds of documents. And also, don't forget, journalisttoolbox.org has all kinds of helpful resources to you. Happy Sunshine Week, and have a good one.